What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit, this is your host that just poop socked The Last of Us 1 and left behind. And I'm now playing The Last of Us Part 2, uh, Zach, in today's subreddit is r slash I don't work here lady. This story's called, Douche Baguette didn't like my answers to her questions, even though I was relentlessly honest. I'm telling you about one event, but I must have a retail face because I'm approached so often. I wear a suit at work. When I call in at any shop on the way home, I leave my jacket in the car so I'm just wearing a shirt and tie. I couldn't tell you how many times people assume I am staff. If they're civil, I'm civil. If they're struggling, I'm helpful. If they're rude, I have fun. The reason I remember this one is because I've said all of these things separately before, but this was the first time I got them all squeezed into one single interaction. It just went so perfectly. It will never happen again. I had called in to a large supermarket to pick up birthday candles. I first saw the woman being very rude to another customer for no apparent reason. Imagine Rush Limbaugh in drag. Sorry to put that in your head. She was just impatient and the other customer wasn't moving fast enough for her liking, so she was insulting her. She definitely ranked above butthole, so let's call her Douche Baguette. As she turned, I saw the missile lock in her eyes as she spotted me. She galumphed her way over. I decided to enjoy it and settled on being deadpan literal as a plan. I looked away. Excuse me? Why? What have you done? What? She paused for a second, looking like a dog that had been shown a card trick, then angrily asked, Can you help me? I couldn't possibly know. I don't know what you want. She makes a Tucker Carlson face. Where do you keep your eyelash curlers? I don't keep them anywhere. Yes, you do. I've seen them before. I'm certain I don't. I've never owned any. My eyelashes manage to bend all on their own. I'm more than happy with the bendiness of my eyelashes. Huh? What? No, idiots. I mean the shop. Where in the shop are the eyelash curlers? I haven't got a clue. Why not? I refer you to my previous answer. I never use them. Ah! Are you trying to be stupid? No. It's effortless. This is insane. Are you gonna find out where the eyelash curlers are? Or would you prefer that I speak to your manager? I'd say neither, but if I had to choose, I'd go for option B. What? You want me to speak to your manager? No. She shakes her head in angry confusion and says, You just said you did. No, I didn't. You asked me which I'd prefer. If I was offered a rectal exam or a slap in the face, I don't want either, but I'd prefer the second to the first. See how it works? This is a phrase I use with my wife when she gives me crappy alternatives. She stood in silence for a few seconds with her mouth open and the deepest frown. She then built up to shout with, This is ridiculous! I completely agree. Where is your manager? I'm not exactly sure, but my guess would be at home with his family. Ah! You're being stupid! Who supervises you here in this store right now? She actually stomped her foot twice when she shouted, Right now. Nobody? What? Why not? Because I don't need to be supervised. I haven't needed supervision in a shop space since I was about nine years old. Oh my god, it's like talking to a wall! I could see that her shouting had attracted a member of management. She was approaching quickly. Why aren't you helping me? Why would I? I think I saw a hint of understanding spread across her puzzled face. You do work here, don't you? No. Why didn't you freaking say so? You didn't ask me. Until now. The manager arrived just as Douche Baguette shouted into my face. You're a freaking moron! Madam, please lower your voice and stop swearing. There are children in the store. What's happening, sir? I'm not really sure. 
This woman was being rude to another customer, then she approached me and started to interrogate me about my personal grooming habits. She wasn't happy with my answers and started to spit shout at me. No, that's not freaking true! I was shouting because I thought he worked here! Whether he was an employee or not, you can't talk like that. You can't abuse customers, and we have a strict policy about abuse towards staff. We don't tolerate it. It's not my fault! He's a freaking idiot! If he had- She was interrupted by the manager. Please, stop shouting! The manager pressed transmit on her radio and said, Security, urgent, code 4, aisle 14. Are you okay, sir? Yes, I'm fine. I just needed birthday candles. Could you tell me where they are? What the frickin' hell is going- Stop shouting. Stop swearing. If I have to warn you again, you will have to leave the store. They're on aisle 22. Okay, thank you. I started to walk away. Meanwhile, Douche Baguette was still shouting. Two security staff turned the corner and passed me on their way to Douche Baguette. I could hear her shouting for another 30 seconds. The next time I saw Douche Baguette, I was standing at the self-checkout. She was being followed out of the store by the security staff. She was complaining into her phone, loudly but unclearly, about the shop, the staff, and some freaking moron as she left empty-handed. Do you think that moron was me? I was wishing so hard for her to look left and see me, but she didn't. If she had shouted at me, regardless of what she said, I was gonna raise my little box of candles and say, Yes, thanks! I found them. The whole thing was so funny. I almost broke and nearly started laughing when she stomped her foot in time with, Right now! I've been mistaken for staff dozens of times, but I've never had it go so perfectly. Probably never will. Don't expect a sequel. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you handle a Karen with class, with poise, with grace, and all that other Miss America bullcrap. I just recently watched that episode of Seinfeld. That show is so funny. That wasn't the most relevant thing ever, but it is a really funny show. The writing is just, it holds up, man. This story's called, I do work here, but not for you. This took place some 20 years ago, so memory may be a bit hazy and one or the other detail may escape me. I was working as an intern for a manufacturing company that would make car accessories. This was in their global headquarters. Once a year, they would have a large conference with some 200 attendees from the international offices in different countries. This was a four-day thing that would have almost the entire conference area of the hotel we were hosting in occupied. The large room was set up as an auditorium, and this is where all the presentations related to the best sellers, change in assortments, novelties, marketing guidelines, etc. would be presented. Then we had three more rooms, a relatively small one we used as storage and back office, and two other rooms that had items on display. One room was such that the windows to the outside were floor to ceiling, and could open so that a car would fit through them, and could be driven in through the fire department access lane that ran outside the building. So in this one room, there were three cars that had various accessories mounted in or on them for display purposes. I was on duty to man one of the rooms while open to the attendees and spent the remaining time stocking merchandise baskets in the main conference room and giving the hotel catering a heads up when a segment was 10 minutes away from finishing so they could roll out the food and drinks to be ready as people poured out of the main conference room. While the conference was in recess, the attendees were meant to enter these display rooms and look at the items on show as they may have been presented during one of the segments on the conference itself. Many of these pieces were novelties being shown before being released to the market, so they were not meant to be seen by people outside the company. On two days where this conference took place, other companies had meetings going on in other rooms, so the conference area couldn't be closed off from the main hotel lobby and anyone who wanted to inspect could walk into the conference area. Normally, this was not a problem because nobody who was not working there would be at a deserted corridor and when people were out, it was obvious that this was a closed group. But one day, during one of the breaks, 
A family, a father and two sons, of tourists wandered in and they went into the room with the three cars and the accessories on display mounted on them. It was pretty close to the end of the break, so there was a lot of movement, but they could easily be made out, as children and a man with a faded t-shirt and shorts stuck out in a sea of suits. I saw them as one of the kids was making a straight line for one of the cars that had color-changing interior mood lighting and underfloor lighting installed. The color-changing bid was for display purposes, but I digress. As the room was soon going to be closed off anyway, I was prepared with the key fobs to lock the cars up before turning off the lights and locking the room. Before he could climb in and mess with the light system, partially installed so the mounting could be visible to the attendees, I shut the car door and locked it, making the kid stop in his tracks and make a face. Before he could run off to the other cars, I dashed over to those and repeated the locking up operation there as well. And none too soon, I may add, because Daddy was already there trying a door and barking at me to open a car for his kids to see. The following dialogue, not verbatim, ensued. Sir, this is not a public display. You and your children will have to leave. Open these cars, would you? What's the harm in my kids having a look at the pretty lights? Again, this is not a public display. This is a private convention for invited attendees only. Please leave. He was getting really close to me, which was funny because I must have been a good 50 centimeters taller than him. His kids also now went to his side as they must have sensed something was not right. I decided that the best thing to do was to slowly walk into him and get him out the door while he argued with me that I should let his kids get into the cars and play with the lights. The conference attendees had already left for the next segment of the presentation in the other room. He continued with me, being so rude, being nasty to his kids for no reason, and I kept repeating that this was all lovely, but that I was working for the company that was hosting the conference, and that the items on display were not meant for the general public. The moment I had them over the threshold, I pulled the conference room door shut behind me and as soon as it latched close, I slipped off to his side and made my way to the waiters that were disassembling the buffet and asked them if they could help me return these people to the lobby, as they were not attendees. This is when Daddy went all indignant and told me that I had terrible customer service and that he will be making a complaint. And I turned around and said, Sir, I don't work for you or this hotel. I don't care if you think I'm rude to you and you want to make a complaint about me at the desk. All I want is for you to get lost from a space my company rented and you have no business being in. He then got really upset and started cursing at me. But the waiters took over and escorted him away from the conference room area, and I returned to the back office to put the key fobs away, and then returned to the conference room with the cars to check that everything was in order and switch off the lights. As I was leaving the conference room, the manager for the conferencing spaces came to apologize, and I told her that it wasn't her fault and that I hope the guy didn't cause much of a scene. She didn't reply to that, but told me that they would be posting someone at the entry from the lobby to the conference area for the remaining breaks that were planned for that day. Yo, those business conferences are actually super freaking sick. So back when my dad owned and operated his own chain of gas stations, he went to these huge Colorado lottery conventions, or at least I think it was Colorado lottery, but he'd get invited there with a bunch of other business owners and stuff, and then he'd come back with a ton of goodies, some of which weren't even available to the public. So I got to munch on some exclusive junk food. It was amazing. I was a fat kid. This story's called Horrible Wedding Guest. Sorry if this doesn't belong here, but I think it might fit. During college, I worked for an independent catering company that mainly did weddings. People tend to either be very nice or very mean at weddings to waitstaff, and the company I worked for didn't really care about the customer, so I always tried to go out of my way to make everyone's experience better. Because my company was independent, it means that we would travel to whatever the venue the wedding was being held at and didn't actually work for that venue. 
After dinner at this specific venue, I was bussing plates and had a full stack of about 10 in my hands with silverware in between them which created some imbalance and they were heavy. I was walking quickly trying to get back to the kitchen without being in anyone's way. This woman tried to flag me down as I was coming towards her and I stopped quickly to say, I'll be right back ma'am, I just need to set these down quickly. As I started to walk away, she grabbed the back of my arm and squeezed it, which made me drop the plates I was carrying. Luckily only a couple of the plates broke and she just sat there and scoffed while I picked them up. Once I was done cleaning up, she snapped her fingers at me and did the finger signal to move in close and she said, now that you're done being a klutz, where is the gift table for me to put my gift for the bride and groom? I was so taken aback that she would talk to me this way. I explained to her that I only worked for the catering company and wasn't sure about where the venue has set that station up. She responded by saying, Well, you need to do your job and find out then, don't you? In the most condescending tone I've ever heard. Now, normally, if the guest was nice, I would have been more than willing to go find the wedding planner and ask, but not this time. At this point, I was done being treated poorly at my job by guests and my bosses, and it was one of those moments I didn't really care if I got fired or not. So I got on my knees and started bowing to her, saying, Yes, master. Of course, master. Anything for you, oh great one. She was pissed, and her husband was mortified. I got up, looked around the room, and from where she was sitting, I could see a table with gifts on it. I pointed and said, I think it's over there. You can see it from where you're sitting. And I hope that no one ever talks to you or your kids if you have them like you talk to me. At this point, she was speechless and seemed embarrassed. Her husband mouthed, I'm sorry, to me and they left shortly after. I didn't get fired, but I chose to quit a couple of weddings later after some more unfortunate events. That's another good way of handling a Karen. Um, give them what they want, but be super extra about it. And then they either A, are forced to see how ridiculous they seem to you, or B, they go along with it and you make it even more ridiculous until they realize how stupid they are. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you check out Daily Dose of Memes. Some sick nasty videos there for y'all. Um, and peace. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.